there exists in the Frederick home what we call the Wana Monster. <laughs> the Wana Monsters. Yes. There's not just one. There's not just three either. There's five of them. They multiply. <laughs> because there's five members in our family. <laughs> we all become Wana Monsters at one point or another. And basically, you can probably gather what a Wana Monster is. It's just, for them, it's like the continued, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna. They're not content, right? The Wana Monster is the opposite of contentment so if you're a parent that means you have kids which means you get a bazillion requests a day (laughs) for things that they want (laughs) whether it's food whether it's water whether it's (laughs) phones we're just in like little kid land so they just want like snacks and activities and things like whenever we try to sit down it's not every night but once in a while we'll sit down and watch a family show night right we'll watch like the baking show or something (laughs) like that and i just get to a point almost every time (laughs) i'm just like just stop asking for stuff because they're like <laughs> like pause they, they want to pause it they don't want to miss it and our two-year-old thinks it's the coolest thing in the world that she knows how to we we don't have a tv in our living room so we, we always watch it on our little laptop yeah and the two-year-old thinks it's the coolest thing to get up and hit the space bar <laughs> and pause it because she wants to go get a kernel of popcorn out of the kitchen <laughs> it's <laughs> control like, it's all about the control <laughs> point is kids are filled with desires right yes. because as humans god has wired us yes. to be driven by desire. I mean, I think that's one of the main reasons why we read in verses, I forget which verses, but Proverbs is, uh, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your Mm -hmm. heart. I think God knows that the way to our hearts from the inside out is by transforming Mm -hmm. our desires. And so when the Holy Spirit enters our lives and we submit our lives to Christ, one of the first things he does, he starts to twist and bend our desires unto his glory Mm -hmm. and unto his will. And so Desire is a very important thing for us to grasp as parents, to understand how the desires of our children are doing two things. They are indicating the content of our children's hearts mm-hmm. to us, mm-hmm. but they're also a way by which we might lead their hearts mm-hmm. through their desire. And disciple them. So we're going to talk about that today, and we'll see you on the other side. Discipling through desire, right? Yeah. That's the idea that we were kind of... Mulling, mulling around, over, yeah. yeah, kicking around as we were thinking through this episode. And I just love that because you now it's not bribing your kids. <laughs> it's, I mean, we say incentivizing. How do you train <laughs> something that you really want? <laughs> I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. We had a, a friend recently who his son ended up slicing his hand wide open, <laughs> like to the bone. This is the, How old is he? He's probably five. five. Yeah. To the bone, sliced his hand wide open. They live on a farm out in the in the middle of nowhere, so they run to the hospital, and he's got to get stitches. And one like of the things he said, sixteen stitches. He said to his son, because his son just lives for snacks, <laughs> like lives for <laughs> treats, for snacks. Like he'll do anything for a gummy bear, right? Yeah. We've known him since he was born, and yeah. he's totally like he's walks awesome in the house, kid. asks for a snack at he, anybody's house. He's basically Charlie Brown. <laughs> he's the best. Like he won't even say hi. He'll just say. You got those snacks? <laughs> Come into the house. Anyway, they said, for every stitch you have to get, we'll give you another treat. And so as he's getting these stitches, he's like grinning. He's like kind of like he's wincing and in pain, but he's like grinning too. Because he means that's another gummy bear. That's another gummy bear. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's so, so funny. The funny thing about this this is I, I don't think that sense kind of goes away even as our kids yeah. grow. As they grow out of the snack phase and into maybe other more intense desires sort of for desires. things are still there. Desires Absolutely. are still huge for drivers. That feel good, that taste good, that we want. Yeah, that are desirable. <laughs> yeah, and I think even as adults, right? Because we're talking about parenting, but I think even as adults, one of the most powerful prayers that we can be praying consistently is God, align my desires with yours. Yeah, change my heart. Like I'm not just gonna muscle this thing and white knuckle it. So I'm doing all the right, that's moralizing, right? But instead we go to our Savior and say, Holy Spirit, change us from the inside out, change our desires that I might be more holy, that I might walk in lockstep with you. Well, and I think it's interesting too, because your children desire, your children, they desire things, right? And then you as a parent desire a response to those things, or you desire something (laughs) that might be contrary to their desire. So then what do we do? We kind of feel left in the spot of, okay, well, I either have to give it to you or I don't give it to you, but then I deal with the not giving it to you and your attitude. But there's a third way. There's a third way. There's a way. third way. And we here at Fierce Parenting believe that all parenting is discipleship. So mm. although you can give and you can withhold, <laughs> there's discipleship in all of that and there's a third way. So we'll get to that in a few minutes. First off, I'm Ryan. I'm Selena. We were the founders, authors of Fierce Marriage and now Fierce Parenting. Mm-hmm. And now our brand spanking new 
revamped, not new, YouTube presence <laughs> called The Fierce Family, where we're just going to live out loud what it means to be a family on mission, a family modeled after the biblical vision for submitted, the home, yes. submitted under Christ. So that's who we are. If you want to be a part of this, you can just go ahead and like, subscribe, rate, review the podcast. If you're listening smash. to this, smash that subscribe button <laughs> on YouTube if you haven't done that. We would love that. It always makes me giggle. Um, I don't know. I know. I'm probably going to wear that out at some point. <laughs> Or if you want to partner with us, you can go to fierceparenting.com slash partner. Uh, There are ways to uh, go deeper uh, in partnership with us if you're on mission. Um, So, discipling through desire. Yes. Man, again, I'm just marveling at this, how God will use our desires to lead us almost like, I wouldn't, this is reductive to say it, but almost like a carrot on a stick, (laughs) right? Yeah. (laughs) That that we think, so many things in our lives, I trace back to, okay, Ryan wanted X, Ryan chased X. <laughs> Ryan needed Y. God gave Y. <laughs> like every breakthrough we've had in our life, every like anything that I would say that was a success. Yeah. It's almost always because God just like, kind of led me in that general direction and then did his own thing. Of course. <laughs> and I was of just course. on board. Of course. And so I think the same is true for us um, as a married couple, but also as parents. So, so we joke a little bit because we have little kids, but we constantly remind them of these little monsters that creep into our relationship with them. They are called the wanna monsters. He didn't want to mention it at first, but we I just think they're just so <laughs> prolific and you should write a kid's book on the wanna monsters. We're working on it. We're working TM. on it. Yeah. Don't take that. Don't you dare. We'll know it was you. There are other ones too. <laughs> Other monsters, but kids. To be revealed. I mean, they're born with desires and things that they need and requests, demands. <laughs> the wanna monsters are things that they want. So they wanna, I want a snack. I wanna go play video games. I wanna, I don't know, whatever they want all the time. Yeah. You name it, parents. You know them. I want to stay up and late. It, I, I want to. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to go to bed. You know, there's. It's very wearisome to a parent, and if you are at home teaching them. As well, I feel like it's 10 times more worse. <laughs> Just kidding. It, it's it's worrisome no matter what you're deciding on education. That's a whole other podcast episode. But oftentimes we can feel trapped. We're here to say you don't have to feel trapped. Mm. Uh, we don't have to just give in. We don't have to withhold. There's another way. But the first thing we want to do is kind of take a step back and recognize this as an opportunity to disciple our children, but also get a gauge on what the content is of their heart and how Mm. our relationship the i would say the temperature of our relationship maybe with them Mm. uh are do they trust us i mean trust is a huge factor when it comes to relationships so i want to i want to make this really clear where we're headed because it's not clear to me so i want to (laughs) maybe articulate it for myself great (laughs) we're talking about struggling with our kids through their maybe um wrong desires or good desires but wanting too much yeah, so unhealthy dis- disordered amounts. love, we'll say. So yes, and that's I forget who said it, but all of sin is, is essentially disordered love, right? Yes. And so that's what we're saying. So we're saying desire is an intrinsic part of the human experience. Who God made us, yes. Now we are going to always kind of be battling against desire. So as parents, how can we see desire I rightly? Guess, yeah, how can we see it correctly? How can we disciple our kids through it? And you're saying that the very foundation of that is the trust in relationship. Well, let's don't take my word for it. Let's okay. jump into Genesis 3 where all was good before this chapter. All was all was right. There was trust, there was relationship, mm. there was interaction and pr- the presence of God with Adam and Eve, with his creation. Mm-hmm. There was communion, there was all access. Yeah. Beauty, health, perfect harmony. Perfect harmony. Yeah. And in comes the slithering snake, the enemy. Did you want to read it? I mean, I think most folks will be familiar with it, but essentially the, the serpent enters the garden and says, hey, don't you want to eat of that tree that God told don't you not you to eat of? Don't you want more is what? Don't you want to know? Don't you want to know? Are, did God really say you. that? Yeah. I mean, he's completely picking away at the trust that they had more than any given. other human being on the face of the earth had interacted with God. And it was just and a I given. Think until like then, he's, yeah. he's God, we're not. Like we're going to trust that. And he said, "Don't eat it." So we're not going to eat of it. And then this serpent comes in mm-hmm. and ruined everything. <laughs> and yeah, and so now now they have this desire for something they didn't have a desire for, and it's chipping away of the trust of the relationship the trust. that was there. And so I think disordered desire at its root is 
on some level, a lack of trust. Now that's just talking about desire itself. Mm -hmm. God, you have given me X. I want Y. Why haven't you given me Y? I want Y. I deserve Y. (laughs) I don't trust you. You're you're just holding back Y from me because you're not a loving God, right? See how that begins to, Mm -hmm. we talked about this at length. We talked about pride last week on the marriage side of things. Now, when it comes to trust and relationship, it's so foundational when, when parents are talking to their kids because like we, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of an example in the recent past. We'll, we'll say uh, our kids, they want to watch some show, right? They want to watch. Or they never want to go to bed. Whatever <laughs> show they're watching, some dragon show. I don't know. <laughs> and Hashtag some, homeschool. <laughs> some cart- cart- cartoon or something. And they, you know, they, one episode is never enough, right? Because they're. They've been taught, programmed to binge watch everything. <laughs> commercials, what are those? No one knows what commercials are <laughs> anymore. And we say, no, that's one's enough. It's 20 minutes long and that's enough show for you. But I want to. And they start, they, they start kind of starting to throw a fit. Mm-hmm. And now those fits go a number, of t- a number of degrees. Sometimes they're really obedient and compliant. And they say, yes, daddy. And they just go off to the next thing. Sometimes they, they want to throw a big tantrum. And so... When they, when they start leaning toward that side of distrusting me, mm-hmm. yeah, we have to remind them or distrusting you. Listen, we're not holding this back from you because right. we're just wanting to kill your fun. <laughs> Do you trust me that I love you? And yeah. I ask him this. Do you trust that I love you? Yes, daddy. Do you trust that I want your best? Yes, daddy. Can you trust me in this decision right now? Okay. <laughs> I mean, Very reluctant. It doesn't always go that way. But <laughs> okay. the point is, is it comes down to trust. And so reminding your children at any age. Yeah. I'm a tr- I'm trustworthy. Like when have I broken your trust? Now if you have broken your child's trust, you've got some rebuilding to do. And one of the foundational things of my relationship with my daughters and you too with with them um is does daddy or mommy do we ever say something and not do it? Mhm. Like you have to be a, a man or a woman of your word. Mm-hmm. And so I always tell them, like, if I say I'm going to take you on a daddy-daughter date, I'm not going to blow that off. I'm going to take you on a daddy-daughter date, even if it's like just getting a banana at the grocery store. <laughs> like we're going, <laughs> we're going to make it special. <laughs> now, granted, if I said we're going to ice cream, then, I, then I'm on the hook for that. The point is, is there's a kind of a depository of trust. Yeah. And if you haven't built that, then I think the only way to do that is through ongoing relationship. And that's where the daddy-daughter dates come in, where we, and that's just one way, but relationship that is predicated on trust that I will do and say what I say I'm going to do and say right and that goes and it's all the in-between moments if I can interject here please because they have that trust built up with you you're doing these you're interacting with them and engaging with them and building trust throughout the day so that when these clash of desires happen somebody wants one thing but mom and dad say no mm-hmm. we now have this bank account of trust that we have built up and they can come to us we can come to them and say hey remember when we talked about this remember mm-hmm. when we talked about how watching this show has kind of shifts your heart it affects your attitude towards your sisters or towards mom and dad and towards authority this is not good for your heart so this is why we're saying no. And I know that you don't like that, uh, but we're not on a power trip here. We're here to protect your heart. We're here to train you, to disciple you, to mm. remember that the things of God are greater and deeper and more beautiful. And I know maybe your five-year-old brain doesn't understand that right now, but we're going to continue training you in this mm. because one day it is going to click. And one day you are going to thank us that we did not let you, we did not give in to all your desires to the ultimate level that you would have wanted. Right. 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 So, I want to get to that third way piece because that is discipleship. But the 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 first way and the second way yeah. would be, I mean, our, our youngest, you know, she's two. She would eat all the candy in the house <laughs> if we let her. Like she'll just go all day, all day. Snacks anything that's just sweet, candy. it's it's on her spectrum of yeah. things she wants to eat. <laughs> and she would just go at it until until I'm convinced she, she would either puke. pass out from a sugar like sugar crash, or she would throw up, <laughs> and her stomach would hurt. And so we have to stop her. Now that the options we have as parents, and this could go for video games. It could go for if your kids have a friendship. Now some of these things are more serious than just candy. So I don't think we're glossing over that. Um, you have maybe kids that are addicted to whatever or they want, whatever they want, even if it's a good thing. Yeah. Right. It could be a positive act like baseball, soccer practice, or some after school thing, any hobby, anything mm-hmm. that can just consume their identity and consume mm-hmm. uh, their desires. So, as parents, we have a decision to make and the, the ways one and two are, okay, well, that thing's bad. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut off video games. No more video games. Right. It's bad because we're seeing a result in your yeah. behavior yeah. or a heart orientation. Yeah. The video games may not necessarily be 
bad in themselves, although. Yeah, you know, or again, <laughs> whatever the thing is, the disordered love, you could say, well, I'm just going to get rid of the thing because it's causing problems in the life of my child. The other thing to do is to say, well, I don't want to, ca- this is way number two, I don't want to rock this boat. It's just easier. Or, hey, it's not a bad thing. We convince ourselves, well, what's so wrong about them wanting to bury Beyond- themselves in this hobby? Yeah. Or he listen. They love video games because they meet friends on there, and yeah. they, they they play with their friends online. Or All their other pl- friends play it, so yeah. now they can talk about it. And yeah. Or you know, or it's just easier to let the kid have candy or the junk food because yeah. they whine so loudly, right? <laughs> and so that, that that's way number two is we just say we convince ourselves it's one way or another, it, like yeah. you give in. Um, so you kind of complacency, it off, I think, or you give in. Yeah. And then the third way is it's an opportunity now for discipleship, right? And that's what you were talking about earlier, and. Not only it kind of I think I think it's probably the one a option, but uh, you're not just removing what the desire mm. is or the desired thing that you they want, mm. but you're replacing it with something better. And again, it's not going from one idol to the next, right? It's not uh, okay. Let's find our identity and our value and everything that you want in this thing. No, instead of playing a video game, let's play an actual game together. Like this will be. Mm way more fun and they may not be on board with it the first five minutes just give them some time hang in there lean into the awkward remember that we're trying to remove kind of that desire we're trying to train that the removal of whatever that desire has brought them to whether it's like quick satisfaction um i don't know a candy (laughs) bellyache i'm just thinking about that example with louisa our youngest Hey, you know what? I'm taking your candy, but here's a nice piece of broccoli. Enjoy. She would eat a carrot, though. I promise <laughs> okay. you. She would take a carrot. Yeah. She loves those big, long carrots. I don't know. Something about chomping on them. One of the things you said, <laughs> but I think it goes all the way back to the, the beginning of the conversation, was instead of just burying yourself in that video game, and I'm not taking it away from you because I don't love you, but I'm saying that this is not healthy at the volume and the level that you're playing it, not volume, audible volume, but yeah. the amount that you're playing. Yeah. So let's play a game together. Do you see what? happened in there is there's now relationship building that is replacing that and I can almost guarantee you that even if kids are putting up this front like they don't want to spend time with you or they don't want to play a game with you like at the end of the day like they 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 do do. they want to talk (laughs) to you they want to spend quality time with you and you're doing them an act of service by saying I'm going to be the parent in this situation yeah let's do this together and I'm not just going to jank it away and then just throw it you know to the side and make you deal with it but I'm going to explain to you what I'm seeing. And that takes a little bit of emotional awareness, emotional maturity on the some parents' practice. part. It takes some practice. It takes a little bit of thinking through exactly yeah. what you're seeing. Because sometimes we just say like, it's bad, it's wrong, that's all I see. But no, take a moment Why is and go bad? a few layers deeper yeah. and say, this is wrong because, okay, well, your kid's not getting sleep. They're not getting healthy interaction with people. The games are maybe violent or whatever those or reasons are. nudity or... Yeah, and then you get even deeper than that. Why is violence bad in that context Mm -hmm. why are real relationships good why is nudity out of place nudity is great in the right place (laughs) fierce marriage podcast (laughs) (laughs) it's great but do your kids know that do they know that it's great in the context that god has designed for that and that being a monogamous marriage between one man and one woman for life that's Mm -hmm. where nudity is (laughs) awesome and so i just had to be really clear on that (laughs) Uh, and so you see how you're going a little bit deeper and not only are you now explaining to them, you're discipling them, you're building a relationship yeah. with them and you're giving them an opportunity to grow into that truth mm-hmm. instead of just making them figure it out blind on their own. Right. Right. Why right. did, That's... why did, why did the mom and dad say no? I don't really know why they said no. They just said no because they're huge killjoys. That's right. why they said no. So I'm just going to go do it whenever I can somewhere else and oh. sneak it. Right. Yeah. Because they don't have any other, like what else are they going to go off of? Right. Right. I want the thing. You said no to the thing. I have no good reason to say no to the thing. Right. So I'm going to get the thing. Yeah. Um, And so remember, it's a discipleship opportunity, which I think is just such a golden, golden third way. Yes. And an opportunity to to step into the role that God's placed you in. Yeah. So So I think that's all we have for you today. Yeah. Do we have any practical application? Go take something away from your Remove and replace. (laughs) Remove and replace. (laughs) But see those opportunities of discipleship. I feel like the whole thing was practical application. Okay. Well, (laughs) so be it. (laughs) The look Selena for those, has spoken. No, I think just Great. again look for the opportunities that you can, you know, remove those those things that are at that volume and find replacements for them. Yeah. There's resources out there. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to kind of be a point of conversation, yeah. uh, something that keeps your hands busy, something that you can do together. Um, and here's the thing: God placed you in the life of your child, right? 
<laughs> he didn't place me there. He didn't place Selena there. He placed you. You can do it. Yeah. And, and he can use your own, your mind, your faculties, your ability to reason and communicate with your kid. Mm-hmm. So just be confident in that. Yeah. And, and trust that it's it's going to be a good thing. Why don't you pray us out, Sal? Okay. God, thank you for uh, the gift that it is to mm-hmm. be a parent, even though it feels hard when desires are waging, requests are wearing us down. God, mm-hmm. I pray that you'd be our strength. Uh, you'd be our fortress <laughs> against them <laughs> sometimes. But also, God, that you, Holy Spirit, you would lead us uh, into knowing the hearts of our children, to be able to help shape their souls uh, and to put them on the path towards uh, mm. right things, righteousness and eternal perspective. God, may we just be modelers of that, whether it be repenting to our children or reading the Bible with them or playing games with them. I pray that they would just see you in us and the joy that you are to us and the Mm. steadfast uh, father that you are in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. This episode of the fierce parenting show is in the can. All right. We'll see you again in about seven days. So until then stay fierce. Stay fierce.